Hey guys, how's it going? Tim Eister here and welcome back to Gasparilla. In today's episode, I am going to be heading out of town and into the country and we're going to start to build some farmland in an attempt to lower our industrial demand and to provide jobs to the people of Gasparilla. Because right now, businesses are struggling a little bit. You know, a lot of businesses aren't getting enough customers and, you know, it's negatively impacting the town. And weirdly enough, despite this, I don't have any residential demand. Um, well, any low density residential demand. And this has been the struggle so far in this series. I, I want to place mostly low density residential to keep that authentic Florida look, but um, it's proving to be a little difficult. So hopefully by building a ton of farms in this undeveloped land over here, we're gonna maybe bump that low density demand up and uh and begin to provide jobs and to uh, provide more customers to these businesses that are struggling in town so i have a little bit of work to do to get started i have to build a road network out here in the country and uh, of course just like florida i'm going to build a very you know grid like pattern out here in the in the farmland so you know it's going to be kind of blocky so I think what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to build a row that's going to go straight out from here. I'm going to build an interchange and uh, and then we're going to start to build out like a nice farming grid out in the country over here. But I just want to get set up before uh, we do that. So I'm going to extend a four lane divided avenue out here towards the highway. And I'm going to pause the game here because I got to destroy a quite large portion of the highway in order to make room for I'm thinking of doing just a simple diamond interchange you know there's plenty of them along I-75 in western Florida so uh, I'm gonna build something similar to that so let's uh, let's bump this road up I'm just gonna check here see if that's a good good height to build this bridge uh, not really because I think oh yeah we've stepped up a little bit here the terrain is higher so that's not gonna work not a big deal I'll just uh, select my shift terrain tool bring the brush strength down to 25% and bring this up to maybe about here let's see let's uh, let's determine if this is a good height to have our bridges on either side here and what I'll do is just widen this out just a little bit there and now let's see if this is good height it looks like it is oh yeah that should work yeah now can I add another pillar over here oh no Oh, that's kind of a shame. I, I, I was hoping I could have two pillars, but maybe hang on. Can I do This works in city skylines one. Will this work in cities two? No, it won't Oh, that's unfortunate Well, I Don't see a way around this so for now it'll it'll just have to be how it is But uh, maybe what I'll do here is, okay, yeah. So on this side, I'll have a pillar here and on this side, I'll have a pillar over there. But I'm just curious, can I add? Okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. Let me know guys if there's a mod to fix that to, you know, if there's a mod that allows Oops, why is this not working? Wait, there, there, there we go. Um, yeah, let me know if there's a mod, guys, that you know of that would allow me to basically build nodes anywhere. That would be much appreciated. There, so we'll just connect up this road over here, connect up this road over here, and I have them backwards. There, and we'll fix this segment over here. And 
then I think there's like a slight turn. Yeah, there's beginning to be a slight turn over here. There, well that's, uh, oh geez, what happened here? Oh no. I think that's the most city skylines thing that's happened today. Here, let me see if I can fix it. There, and connect this up like so. There, well, it's not perfect. It's a little bit of a bump, but not enough to really cause any harm so now I'll just smooth everything out make this look like a true Florida diamond interchange a classic and then I think I'll make it a little unique in that I'll build this into a four lane just like this and then I'll Keep a three lane going a bit farther down just to create a smooth transition. There, just like that. And then instead of having a one lane exit, I'll do like a big old two lane like this. How's that? Not bad, eh, guys? Actually, I think on the on-ramps, I'll convert them into a one lane. And this is quite common in the states on the interstate system from what I've seen, so Basically, it just allows motorists to merge in the exit and then merge onto the highway instead of having like two lanes trying to merge onto the highway that already has a lot of traffic. So it's just a bit of a safer system, I believe, is why it's uh, it's done that way. All right, so we'll do the exact same thing on this side. There, nice and smooth, and there we have it. It's a pretty nice interchange, if I say so myself. And actually, maybe we can decorate it a little bit. I noticed that in Florida, there's a lot of interchange that are nicely decorated. They got palm trees and all kinds of like shrubbery in the uh, the median of some of them, some of these big old interchanges. So. Let's do a little, little something like that. So using my tree controller, I am going to build some already matured palm trees. And actually I can use my line tool to line them up just like this. I think I'm gonna spread them out a bit more, maybe, maybe like 30 meters would be all right. Yeah, it looks pretty good right down the middle like this. Just do maybe uh, maybe a couple palm trees in here, just like that. These look awful small for fully grown trees, but I guess you know, they look all right. Yeah, it's a very Florida-esque interchange. And uh, actually over here, I might be able to go even farther I can do a, I can do like these turning lanes here. Let's do that. So what I'll do is add a node here and then I can build a left turning lane here and then another one over here. Isn't that cool? All right, well, 
let's uh, carry on. I'm gonna extend my four lane road, I think a little bit farther. And let's throw a little bit of a curve ball in here. Let's make this go diagonal. Oh shoot, but then by doing so, it makes it a bit more complicated. Hang on. I'm just gonna build a road like this, and then I can build a parallel road. There. And then this will tone down to a little two lane road that goes way out into the country. And one thing that is very common in Florida from what I've noticed on the West Coast is that where much of the exterior of the state, like on the coast, is very populated, uh, the interior is very sparse, and there's no like smooth transition between the two. It's like, you know, you're just driving through farmland, and then boom, you're in the city, you're in an endless abyss of suburbs and that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna try to make it the same in this series too. There's just gonna be like a wall and on one side is gonna be country, and then suburbs <laughs> on the other side. There, all right, so let's build, um, probably like somewhere over here, I guess, would be fine. Let's build a turn off here. Let's build this perfect 90 degrees, and then we'll have this road intersect with this main road over here. And luckily these interchanges are a lot easier to build. So we got a four lane here and we'll do a three lane here. And that's it. <laughs> Easy peasy. There, and then I think what I'll do is I'll just keep this road going straight out this way. With the occasional turn. I guess over here I can sort of do the same. Oh yeah, and these big splotches, guys, um, these were forest fires, just uh, in case you were curious. So these trees, what happens in city skylines is um, the trees go back down to like infant state, so then they just have to regrow. So effectively, the, the downside of that is it eliminates any um, forestry potential until the trees grow back. But that's only if you don't have the tree controller. So we're, uh, we're all set. All right, so I got my main roads laid out. Now, if I go back into my small roads, we're gonna build a series of gravel roads because of course, these main roads do not have a, uh, an actual road connection to them. So you can't actually build any farmland on them. So let's, uh, let's start building some farmland. Now my goal, this is a pretty ambitious goal guys, but I would love to fill in like this entire like interior region here with farmlands. Not all of it, there's gonna be some nature parks and stuff, but you know, what isn't a nature park will be farmland. <laughs> there, so. I guess what I'll do here is just build a random assortment of little back roads. There. Do, uh, let's do a little something like this. Just to get us started. And then we can start building some farmland. So let's go into our specialized industry. Oops, wrong menu. I keep mixing these two up. Um, okay, so in Florida, uh, there's a lot of cattle country. Unfortunately, we don't have such a thing in uh, City Skylines 2. So we're gonna do livestock farming. 
And let's put our very first farm down. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, just right over here. And then I'll just do a big old square, square farm. Pretty much as far as I can go, I guess. Hmm, that last little corner there is... Okay, let's, let's do a little something like this. Maybe we can just have some houses over in that little corner. So, bam! There we go. First farm. Now I'm curious, there's going to be buildings that are going to spawn in here. I'm hoping they're going to spawn in a grid pattern and not, like, all over the place. So, uh... We'll just have to see here what happens. Oh. Oh, nice! Alright, so it looks like they are spawning in a grid sort of pattern. Oh, shoot, I gotta provide water and power to these guys. Here, so let's have a power line running along this road, just like any other country road in the US and North America. And then what I'll do is, off of this power line, I will simply run a cable to go underground, which connects to, uh, to this farm. And then what I'll do for water is effectively the same thing. So a bit earlier, I'd run a pipe to go to our public works area. So I'll just keep going. And I'll just, uh, I'll keep that pipeline going. Oh shoot, I thought I grabbed the combined pipe. No big deal, I'll just convert it into a uh, double pipe. There we are. And let's hit play again, and that should solve all of these issues. Hopefully. Is power not coming through here? Oh, looks like we might have a problem over here at the... Oh yeah, what's wrong? Why is the... The power lines aren't working. What's going on? Oh, there we go. Okay. It's kind of weird. Not really sure why this segment wasn't working, but anyways. Maybe... Oh, maybe it didn't connect right? Oh, it looks like it didn't connect right. Oh, well. Not a big deal. So, we got that hooked up, but it looks like water still isn't working. What's wrong with water now? Do I have to uh, maybe connect from here? Everything looks hooked up over here. Yeah, that's all good. Oh, is it a problem with like capacity maybe? Maybe, uh, maybe I need like a water. No, it's not, water is not really the problem. It's the uh, sewage, that's the problem. All right, well, uh, bear with me just a moment, guys, while I figure out what's going on here, and I'll be right back. Well, I don't know if this was a bug or what it was, but I just ran a pipe from these two sections, because this is, like, pretty close to the water treatment center, and it just works, so... I don't know. There must be some sort of bug. So, let's keep going. Now, I don't want to just plaster this whole area with actual functional farmland. I actually want to spend a little bit of time detailing and making my own farms. Now, with the uh, the addition of the dev mode, um, I'm able to plop all sorts of, well, hopefully farm-related equipment. I haven't actually checked. Uh, we'll have to experiment with that. But I'm hopeful that we'll be able to spawn all sorts of farm equipment. And uh, it's going to create a little bit more variety in uh, in the landscape. And that's, that's kind of why... I wanted to uh, to give that a try because all of the farms in City Skylines unfortunately look identical, and uh, yeah, I just want a bit more variety, you know, to spruce things up as much as I can, make it interesting. There, so I'm just gonna haphazardly spawn in a bunch of farmland. 
Okay, maybe I'll do a big old farm over here. And I'll leave some room for some other potential farms in the middle here. Oops. Oh. Attempt number two. There. I wonder when the devs are going to fix that little issue. Where, you know, you got to be careful how you plot your farms. Otherwise, they don't work. There. All right. So we got... Uh, Got a nice little farm set up here. Now it's not really affecting my industrial demand. Are these even working? Oh yeah, they are. Okay, it just takes a little bit of time. Yeah, so I think once we really start to ramp up our farming production here, we should start to see a dip in industrial demand, hopefully. All right, guys, so, you know, I've got a few farms going here. Let's try to create our very own custom farm. So, um, oh, actually, I, I got to use your tips, guys. So if I select any kind of tree and then I turn off, I turn <clears throat> Wait, is it actually working? Oh, wow. Okay, it's actually working. Nice. So I am removing trees there I'm removing every type of tree without uh, having to select individually which tree I want to remove all right guys well let's see what we can do here with dev mode enabled now we have a little search tour tool up top here so uh, let's start off with a barn I know there's a variety of barns already so let's do that let's uh, let's pop a barn here and then uh, we got another kind here this almost looks like a house honestly so uh, maybe i'll do one here you know honestly just those two are good and then for a driveway let's just do a little path you know this this is totally subjective guys Nothing here really has to be functional. As long as it looks cool, that's really what I'm going after. There, a little something like that. And then maybe I can make a little branch off here for cars. And then, uh, what else goes on a farm? Like, do we have any, like, tractors? Tractor one. Oh my god, look at that. We got tractors. Let's plop a tractor here. <laughs> you can even hear it running. Look at that. We got Jeremy Clarkson's Lamborghini here. Beautiful. What else do we got? Oh, we got some grain trailers. Let's put a grain trailer in the back here. Some sprayers for crops. Wow, guys, we got a ton of props here for farm stuff. More trailers. That's uh, that's pretty cool. There. Uh, what else? Fences. We need we need fences. Oh my god, we got a lot of fences here. What kind of fence should we put? No, not residential. Do we have, uh, let's see. It's all residential. Maybe industrial? No. Nothing here. It's like industrial high and low. Oh. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Look at that. Literally a farm fence. 
Now, with this fence, I should be able to use my straight line tool. And... Oh, actually, I think there is a fence mode. Oh yeah, look at that! Nice! Alright, let's build a fence, guys. Let's extend our fence all the way over here. I think I'm going to turn on Anarchy just, just for good measure so we don't break anything. So let's have a fence go all around this property. Oh, do I have to put it like halfway maybe? Oh, okay, there. So of course this is a little more time consuming than just building... Any regular old farm, but it's going to create a good variety here. We'll have all different kinds of farms and whatnot. There. Yeah, I'm not too fussy. I don't think it has to be perfect. And then I'll have... Eh, maybe I'll just build a fence like this in the back. Oh, no! <gasps> what did I do? I broke it, guys. Can I remove these fences? Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, okay. I think I can just remove these. And then plop them again. Okay, so it looks like uh, some props may not be able to clip into each other, maybe? Is that, is that possible? I might have to be careful. There. Let's go back into our fences. And then it was industrial low. And I gotta be careful here. I'm not, maybe, maybe if I just do like, here, I'll, I'll just be safe. <laughs> I won't clip anything into each other. There, and now let's, uh, let's maybe add a couple trees, you know, a couple pine trees here. There's a lot of pine trees in Florida. And then maybe a big old oak right in the middle of the yard. And then some shrubs here in the middle, you know, just so it looks nice. There. Now, if you're playing with dev mode, you'll notice that there is actually animal spawners. You know, there's a whole variety of them, but I haven't been able to get them to work. Thankfully, there is a mod out there. Let me just check what it is. I, I want to show you guys. This is another mod showcase opportunity. So let me go in my playset here. I got a Florida playset. And the name of this mod is Extra Networks and Areas. Okay, so let me just briefly go over this mod. It looks like they've added some new screenshots, actually. Um, so what I want to show you here is with this mod, you're able to add a whole variety of invisible roads. So this could be useful if you're making parking lots or, you know, I'm sure there's other applications where you would want to do this. Um, this is really cool too. You can add like pedestrian zones. So right now in City Skylines, parks don't really work. There's not any people walking around on the trails and stuff. So with this mod, you're able to add some people walking around. But this is really what I wanted to showcase for this mod. Uh, we can actually spawn some animal spawners in the game. And as you can see here, there is a whole bunch. We got pigs, we got cows, we even got like sharks and dolphins, which is very fitting for the Florida theme. So I'm going to be making use of this mod quite a bit. And uh, I think here as well, you can add an invisible taxi stand. So basically taxis can stop anywhere. So yeah, just to show you guys. Um, so rather than using dev mode to spawn animals, I'm just gonna go here in, uh, where was it again? I totally forgot where this was. Parks and Recreation, or is it? Okay guys, I just had to relaunch the game for a second because 
my uh, spawners and spaces and areas weren't showing up in the game. Apparently, the order in which you install mods is can matter for certain mods, and this is one of those cases. So let's uh, let's give this a try. Oh, can you actually see the spawner? Oh, you can. Okay, well, in this case, I think. Oh no, you can't. All right. Oh, perfect. They're only visible when you're actually in the, uh, the landscaping tool. So here, let's just plop a whole bunch of these. <laughs> Look at that. Woo, we got some cows. Do they only spawn one cow? I mean, there's two that spawned over here. Oh no, there's multiple. They're all spawning in on each other. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's fine. Yeah, I, I don't know if they, they don't really move around, but it's okay. So, yeah, guys, um, this is just a, a quick example, really, of uh, what is possible with, you know, a few mods and the dev tool. So, I mean, yeah, it's just a, a, a quick example of what we're going to see out here in the country. So I'm going to go into time-lapse mode for the next little while, guys, and I'm just going to lay down some farmland out here, and we'll see what kind of effect it has on the whole, you know, demand and, and whatnot a bit later in this episode. So stay tuned, guys, and enjoy.
All right, well, despite placing all of this actual functional farmland, it has had zero effect on my industrial demand. So I don't know if farming jobs don't count towards like industrial jobs. I would assume they would, but maybe not. Um, I guess the important thing is that these farms are providing jobs, which they are, you know, 20 or so employees per farm. So, uh, so that's good. But the issue still remains that I have zero low density residential demand. So to, to fix this issue, I think what I'm going to do is plop some little tiny industrial zones all throughout this farmland. And I'm really going to be careful here not to place any like huge industrial zones because I don't want like big factories with smokestacks spawning in uh you know in the farmlands over here so let's uh let's go ahead and plop a few little small zones around our agricultural area and the wind is blowing in the right direction so pollution shouldn't be that much of a concern Yeah, you can see it's starting to have an effect on my industrial demand, so that's great. Oh, did you see that, guys? Low density residential demand just ticked up a little bit and then it disappeared again. And I think that's going to be the case for the next little while because I have like a surplus of undeveloped residential zones. So as soon as there's jobs available, people start moving in. It's just going to eat up that demand as soon as it comes in. So I just have to make sure that uh, I keep up with the industrial zones, you know, as long as there's available jobs in the city, then we will, uh, we will have homes being built. Now, one thing I'm hoping I'll have to check this out. I'll have to see when all of these little industrial buildings are built. I'll have to check what kind of industrial buildings they are. I'm hoping that they're going to spawn in like a sort of agricultural variant. Um, because similar to commercial in City Skylines 2, buildings will spawn in, or, or types of commercial or, or, you know, whatever buildings spawn in, they, they'll come in as certain themes, depending on what is needed in your town, what kind of materials or what kind of services or goods. So I'm hoping that because there's so many farms over here that all of the industrial buildings that I'm zoning are going to spawn in as you know, actual like agricultural themed buildings. Oh yeah, this is working great, guys. There, maybe just a few more zones. I guess I could have like one or two big old zones like this. Like I'm pretty confident that these industrial buildings are going to spawn in as like an agricultural kind of theme. Let's go check out. Okay, this was the first zone I plopped, so it's still not built. Let's uh, accelerate the simulation a little bit. Well, this is a little concrete business, it looks like. So... Not necessarily agricultural, but timber, paper, at least these are like, you know, modern industries. They don't have like big old smokestacks. Well, this, this one does, but I guess it's still not like a big factory and plus it's like the only one around. So I'll let that one slide. Oh, what do we have over here? Well, we got another one. Petrochemicals. You know, I'll let it slide. At least, as long as it's not like every second industrial building is just like a big old factory with plumes of smoke coming out of it, I'm fine. But I think it's uh, it's apparent that I can't build industry zones fast enough. As soon as I build them, my demand is just getting eaten up. Or, well, it's just coming right back, rather. 
So I might have to build a sort of industrial zone somewhere in the city. Somewhere on this map. But let's could just go take a look over here in town. So there's still some blank spots. Like there should be houses here. But other than that, it looks like pretty well almost everything has been zoned in. And then over here too, like this is building up. This this was not moving at the end of the last episode. So this uh, providing industrial jobs trick seems to be working. Now, all of my businesses here are still kind of struggling. They're, they're, they just don't have enough customers. So I guess I'll just have to keep up with the uh, residential development. I guess maybe in the, uh, the next couple of episodes, I'll build up like this whole area here between the city and the highway and then start to build out into the suburbs. We'll try to do that. All right, guys, I've expanded a bit more on my agricultural zone here. So you can see that I placed a few more farms and I also placed some new smaller industrial buildings in between in an effort to lower my industrial demand. But unfortunately, my demand is still sky high right now, which I guess isn't really a bad thing as the more industrial buildings I place, the higher my low density residential demand goes up which is really exciting because it sets me up really good for next episode as I want to start expanding outwards from the town of Gasparilla. And uh, I'm really hoping by doing that, it's going to solve this not enough customers problem that pretty much every business in town is suffering from. So that's the plan. We're going to continue that in next episode. So I'm going to wrap things up right about now and, uh, and we'll continue that later on. So guys, with that being said, thank you so much for watching this episode. I really hope you appreciated it. Make sure you leave a like, drop a comment down below, let me know what you think. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of future uploads. So that's it for me guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.